Hi everyone. Yesterday, Eagle Dynamics gave us an update on the CH47 Chinook. Although short, what stuck out for me was the work on the flight controls. There's also lots of other things going on, pilot and crew model updates, etc. But more about those later on. As you may have seen in my previous videos, I've highlighted my personal experience with the Chinook in DCS and how I think the flight controls desperately need to be updated. I can swap reasonably well now between myself and Bob flying around, but the handover can be pretty wild at times, with Bob pitching the nose excessively to correct how I was flying, whilst I'm busy trying to dodge things on the uh, contention server. So anyway, let's take a look at the short update from Eagle Dynamics, and I'll fill in a few gaps as to what it is that they're referring to. So from the newsletter then, we are adding new elements and functionality to LCT, Longitudinal Cyclic Trim. Hopefully then, this is to help correct the current problem of the aircraft not being essentially in a level orientation, especially when lifting into the hover and into forward flight. So for example, into the cruise, i.e. in the cruise, it should be something like this, which is how Bob flies and not how, how we have it. So very kind of nose down. They go on to say AFCS, so automated advanced flight control system, DAFIX, digital advanced flight control system. Well, you know, they, this is pretty much the same thing, but I'm hoping this will enable the controls, modes of operation and indications which are available on the real aircraft to, to be, um, yes, added to uh, the model that we have. They then go on to say, dash, Digital airspeed hold. OK, so this is differential airspeed hold, which sits in the controls closet back here. This is essentially the uh, actuators that are sat on this uh, either end of this black rod, which extend and retracts to enable the cyclic control to sit essentially in a more natural position and to enable this thing that we call the positive stick gradient. So again, it's good news that they're looking at uh, updating this. Next then, DCP, differential collective pitch. So this is where the lift is increased or decreased on the forward and aft heads as controlled by the cyclic stick and the LCTs. For example, when moving forwards, we decrease lift on the forward blades and increase it on the aft. The nose drops and the aircraft moves forwards. The current problem is that the aircraft will stay in this nose down orientation for the whole time, pretty much. The nose should come back up again to enable a level airframe, just like Bob flies it. And then they go on to say, as well as new pages and associated functions. This is good. Hopefully the RWR, the radar warning receiver, is also part of this. Personally, I have no audio warnings, but apparently I've seen on forums, Discord and, and what have you, that people who have the Apache module do get an audio warning, which is a bit weird. Also, other things that they could look at um, updating for, for sure is things like we get the engine air particle separator, EEP captions that uh, come on on your warning cautions, even though they're not actually fitted. The cruise guide, which is a small little indication here, you can see it on the uh, MFD. This doesn't work at all. This is actually a vital indicator, especially when lifting a heavy load. Another great comment I've seen, and I, I do ag agree with to a degree, is the size of key readouts such as things like altitude, speed, etc. They can be quite small 
you know, I, I guess, you know, you, you are kind of looking at an MFT from a distance. It's not quite the same as being, uh, say, in like an F-18, where the, the MFT is sort of like, seems certainly seems to be physically close to you. So this is kind of where I guess realism is potentially hindering what's going on. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe they can do something that maybe increase it, the size of those in indicators by a teeny tiny amount. At least though, you know, the rad out is certainly uh, reasonably kind of easy to see. And in, in terms of altitude, well, for if you rattle around on, on Chinook, that's probably the one that you're looking at. Uh, next thing, so they talk about new aircraft skins. Again, this is uh, good to see. Uh, although, yeah, I've, I've got to highlight the, the community um, because they're already hard at work, as you can see in these examples here, producing various kind of skins, which, uh, you, you know, you can go ahead and, and download and fly around within the game. Uh, I particularly love the 27 Squadron Centenary skin. You've probably seen it in some of my other videos. Uh, uh, yeah, a Brava November skin next next please next they go on to say uh more advanced sling functions so as you know at the moment we only have the center hook right so being able to use the other two hooks makes all the difference and yeah i mean it's it's fun fundamental to the chinook next then um improvements to the cargo system so it's only good start where where we are um and i guess it depends kind of how you're flying chinook whether you're flying it by yourself or for, for me it's 99 percent kind of multi multiplayer such as i say like contention server or something like that um yeah i mean it's a good start uh hopefully yeah i mean we we want to see the troops walking on to, onto the back and uh, being able to see them in the cabin similar to you know um, certainly parts that we saw on the trailer which they released a while back next then they talk about new crew served weapons so at the moment um, we've got the port and starboard uh, m60s so for me i'd love to see m134 miniguns fitted on the port and starboard and the m60 on the ramp please oh and whilst we're there for the 60s you know there's got to be more than just 200 rounds of ammunition that seemed that seems a bit daft right they they can carry several cans worth of ammunition so certainly plenty to get them through through a mission you're probably talking i don't know like 800 rounds or something like that not not 200 the other thing is for those uh port and starboard guns to be ai gunners right so I don't know if you realise this, but you can actually hop in there. So if you get Bob to fly the aircraft, you can press the number keys, move into the position. I think it's uh, four and five, I want to say. And then he can take control of the M60 using the mouse. Certainly I can, I can use the mouse. But again, I've seen some people having on the forums that are having some trouble uh, moving the M60s around. I mean, I, I've not made any kind of adjustments to that it just seems to have been working by default that i can use the mouse and it's quite natural to point the m60 and press your left left mouse button and, and start rattling rounds off finally then we have our first look at the pilot models and updates to the flight engineer so in the newsletter the dcs ch 47 f module will soon be receiving first person pilot models these models are being crafted to ensure every aspect of the pilot's appearance reflects real world standards. The flight suits, helmets and accessories such as body armour, communications gear have all been modelled. This will be particularly important improvement for those of you flying in virtual reality. These new models will be fully integrated into the cockpit and animated to correspond with crew actions, crew control, interaction with instruments and more. So yeah, looking good. For me, I, I normally fly in VR, although at the moment my 
Um, Quest 3 Link is just not playing at all, but yeah, that, that's another story. But yeah, similar to when I fly the Huey, it's kind of great to look across and see the co-pilot there, but not only that, that's their hands on the controls and moving around and things like that. And also the, the gunners that are kind of over your shoulder as well. Uh, models look great. Something I think that they should introduce is like a, a female pilot uh, model as well um, as, as an option. Because, again, you know, this reflects the, the, the real world. Yeah. So it's great to see the Eagle Dynamics have taken on board the feedback Certainly for the flight model, that's that's kind of a bit a big thing for me and I know for a lot of you out there as well. And are hard at work updating lots of other features with this great aircraft. I guess the only kind of key bit that uh, people are kind of keen on hearing is, you know, what's, what's the time scale on that? And I didn't kind of see anything on that. Maybe it's kind of buried in some in uh, parts of the forums or something like that but hopefully it's not too far away. Anyway, I'm Chris UK27. Have a great day. Cheers. Bye-bye.